For those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Kelly O'Dor, and I'm the marketing director for Bookster, which is a property management software here in Scotland. And I'm joined today by really the team of Verbo. We've got three lovely ladies, Henrika Hare, who was actually in our last event, uh, which we did a couple of, well, probably about a month ago now, and I can share that event with you as well. We've got Sandra Sutton, who is here, as you can see on the chat, she'll be helping you out. And Jessica Elms will be contributing with her advice as well. So today's event is especially for um, the short let industry, vacation rental industry, whatever you want to call it, for managers who are looking to really optimize and attract better bookings, really good quality bookings through Verbo. And we've thrown in a little bit of insight as well because Verbo really get an kind of overall view of what's happening in the industry. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've never done this before, so you know it can go one of two ways. I'm gonna put a poll up which is asking really to try and understand who is with us today, because then we can tailor what we say and how we say it. I want to understand whether you currently work with Verbo. So if I just find my poll, I'll switch it on and you should be able to see that now in the chat. And if you click on the button for do you currently use Verbo, it should say, yes, you do. No, you don't. Or it's not applicable. Maybe you're um, in the cleaning industry or you have worked for the channels. Okay, I can see lots of uh, results coming in there. So I'm going to let that run just on the side. And while you put in your answers, I'm going to pass over to Henrika. I'm going to put on Henrika's slides and she can introduce the rest of the team. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much for joining everyone. It's great to have you. Uh, we can actually probably just move to the next slide here, Kelly. Mm -hmm. So we've already had a little insight on who's here today. So we have Jessica Elms who is actually in our partner success account management team. So she will be presenting lots of great insights about how to really optimize your listings and how to get the most out of it. So this whole session is supposed to be a bit of a follow on from the last session we had where we talked a lot about the verbal travelers and uh, what verbal is really all about. Um, this time we're getting really into the nitty gritty of things. So just um, maybe you remember me from the last one. My name is Henrika. I'm, I work as a account manager on the connectivity level. So I work more on the software level with Kelly and her team. Um, lots of things commercial and technical. We're making sure that everything works and that we have a great partnership um, that then ultimately benefits you as the property manager. And then again, as uh, Kelly already said, we have Sandra on the line. She is the uh, manager of the UK C uh, partner success team and she will be there to answer your questions. Um, of course, we can answer questions too, if it's applicable to us. And then Kelly has already introduced herself. So yeah, we can dive straight into things. Okay, I'll just tell you what's happening with the polls. So we've got just over 40% already use Verbo and just over 35% don't use your Verbo. So it's a bit of a mix here. So just bearing that in mind. Thank you very much for everybody who answered. Thank you, Kelly. These are great insights. So um, I think we have something for everyone here. And this is just a little agenda of what we'll cover today. Um, so you might have attended our last webinar where we talked a lot more in detail about the verbal traveler. So I won't go into, into that too much. But if you haven't attended that one, um, I believe that is also recorded and Kelly can uh, get you the info that was on there. So you won't miss out on anything. Um, but what we do have is a few new market insight pieces on the verbal traveler, how they behave, um, particularly focused on the UK market this time. And then Jessica will take us through some in some more detail about how exactly you can make the most of your listings if you are listing with verbal. Um, and then Kelly will show us um, just how to use it in Bookster, really in the software, so how it's applicable there. And then, uh, yeah, two more things. I just, I said already, Sandra will be there to answer questions. So have, if you have questions, just pop them in the chat. If you prefer to ask them afterwards, that's fine too. You can find us on LinkedIn or, you know, just email us. That's no problem at all as well. Oh yeah, and don't worry too much about the note taking as well. We do have an optimization guide for you that we will be sending out shortly after the webinar. Uh, next slide, please, Kelly. Okay, so I did want to remind you about the verbal mission and our mission is that we want to help families everywhere to find the perfect holiday home 
to really reconnect with each other. So our main focus group uh, is families and groups. And by now, we are a global network helping millions of families around the world to connect every year with a unique selection of two plus million holiday homes all over the world. So really, um, families are our thing and we are very good at what we do in that regard. Next slide, please. Okay, so in this uh, webinar, we really want to show you what the Verbal Traveler wants, how Verbal facilita facilitates that on our platform, and then how to set the necessary functionality up in the Bookster software. And this slide is mainly just to, to tell you that we have a great partnership with Bookster. We have already developed some tools and some optimized connectivity with them, and we are constantly talking to each other to make sure that we have some really good um, flow of, of information of what we need, feedback of what you guys need in the industry, and then how we can how we can make that work in the software between us. Um, next slide, please, Kelly. Okay, so I will dive right into some travel trends for the UK travel industry now. Um, I want to highlight that Verbo does constant market research, so we don't just you know we don't just make up facts; we base them. Uh, on evidence, so lots of, lots of lots of research being done by the Expedia Group and Verbal, and that's really great for you guys as well because we can share that data or a lot of data, not all of it, of course. Um, but if you do have questions, you can always reach out to your account manager if you have one, or to either any of us to find out a little bit more about um, <clears throat> all of those travel trends and and things you might want to know about. Okay, next slide, Kelly. I could I ask a question about one of those sure. uh, statistics? So mm -hmm. the top right statistic, 56% of those who often work remotely will take a leisure style trip, extending a work trip for leisure or by vice versa. So for, could you just give a little bit more detail of what leisure is? Because I don't think everybody's going to know and actually what the implications might be for property managers for that particular thing. Yeah, sure. So pleasure, I think, is actually quite an American term. And um, I prefer to use the term flexcation, which you may have heard in the past. So I would say both of them are pretty much the same thing. But specifically during the pandemic, we've seen that people have taken longer trips. They have taken some time out with the kids and, you know, with the whole family because everyone was working from home anyway. Everyone was homeschooled. So um, it was a good opportunity to get out of the house, to have a, you know, a little bit of a holiday away from home without um, you know, maybe in a in a vacation rental specifically, without going to a very touristy, overcrowded place. So this is where you where people mix leisure and uh, business, which is where that leisure term comes in. I don't particularly like it very much. I much prefer flexcation, but that's what it means. So leisure and flexcation is the same thing. I would say yes. Okay. <laughs> and then that's the implication for property manager is really that uh, you need to just be aware of that that's still happening. So we have seen a trend more towards the shorter trips, like you can see that on the bottom left hand side, which is very important to know. But uh, since we still have both, so it's very important to have your calendars open for both types of trips so that it's not just your standard one week holiday, but it can be longer, it can be shorter as well. And as far as providing amenities for kind of pleasure, travelers is there something in particular that they're looking for that you you would recommend that people consider for their properties yeah of course this is um it's important to have not necessarily a full office setup but if you have at least some uh you know you need to have the tech the um, technical uh, facility so you have to have wi-fi preferably fast wi-fi and then you have to have the space where people can sit and actually take a little bit of time to, to do their work. So that would be very important to understand. Um, and I think Jessica has a bit more information on that a little bit further down in the, um, in the slides. Perfect. Okay, I'll just move on to the next slide. Great. So this slide here um, represents the top 10 search destinations across the UK. Um, this is from quarter one, 2022. So this year, pretty fresh. As we can see, cities are really starting to come back. So the so London is back on number one. I say back on number one because we did compare it with 2019 data, so pre-COVID data, um, and London was on top of the list there as well. So it's you know just a big draw, did drop, and people were going to more regional 
areas in the last two years. But um, yeah, everything has pretty much returned to normal in terms of the, the preference of the tra traveler in the UK this year. Okay, fantastic, thank you. And then we can go to the next, perfect. So this slide is a little bit about seasonality in 2021, so that was last year. Um, it highlights the search trends for the UK region. And you can see two bars there, two, two graphs. Um, it's 2021 in blue and 2019 in orange. So you can really see the same peak months. They remain the same in both years. However, there is a little bit more demand being driven between June and October in 2021. So all up uh, performance is a little bit better. And we expect to see the same trend this year where maybe a little bit more demand moves into the shoulder months. So shoulder months means just the months a little bit outside of the main season. So for example, May is a little bit more pre-summer and September is post-summer. So we can, it's kind of extending a little bit, which is really good news. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this slide here um, just demonstrates the length of stay trends that we've seen across the UK. This is for 2021 again for last year. Uh, we have seen a high volume of bookings come in for seven or less nights. So this is confirmed by data. Um, we have seen that 78% of travelers are now looking for more frequent short trips. So the longer trips are kind of, you know, um, I wouldn't say they're going away, but we have seen the shorter trips coming back, which is really important, as I already said, about uh, for um, stay length, flexibility, and uh, your stay strategy throughout the year. So if a property manager is wanting to maximize on that, then they're looking to adjust their length of stay minimum. Perhaps instead of it being seven days, if they wanted to look at that shorter, shorter holiday group, then they would be thinking about three days, perhaps. Um, yeah, it's probably a mixture. And I mean, every property manager probably knows their, you know, their seasonality and their customers quite well. But I mm -hmm. would suggest to not be to be open to be open minded about um, flexibility. And if you want to really know a little bit more about your particular your region, I think that's a really good thing to discuss with your account manager on Verbal because they have really good insights. And it also depends on who you want to attract, right? If you want to attract um, people who just stay for the weekend or if you want to attract a, a longer stay with it for a family holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And that's my part done already. So I will hand over to Jessica from the Partner Success Team and she is really the expert in all things optimization. So Jessica, take it away. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Enrica. Can you guys hear me well? Great, thank you. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jessica and I work on the partner success team here at Verbo. Um, I work specifically with integrated property managers and really cannot stress enough how important you guys are to our business. You all provide great experiences for travelers and make it easy for them to find a great to find and book a great property. So we really want to make things as easy as possible for you as well. So when you partner with Verbo, you get access to our dedicated technical support and partner success teams. And the number one thing that I hear whenever I meet with property managers is how much they love the support that they receive from Verbo. Not only are you able to pick up the phone and talk to a real person, um, you also get access to a ton of data like some of the insights that Henrika has shared, which helps to empower you to make the right decisions for your business. So together, we can review specific trends that we're seeing in your market to uncover opportunities to help you really achieve your goals. We can help you to improve your conversion rates, get more bookings and ultimately grow your revenue as well. Um, so our technical support teams are also available to ensure that your connection runs smoothly. They work exclusively with partners who are using software such as Bookster, um, and they're really knowledgeable in this area. So they're best placed to troubleshoot anything with you and will work very closely with the Bookster team as well to resolve any queries quickly and seamlessly. So really, we're all here to support you. And today, what I'll be sharing is some key recommendations to set you up for success with Verbo. And Kelly will help me out with how to action those suggestions within your Bookster software as well. 
So as Henrika mentioned, um, here at Verbo and, and within Expedia Group, we regularly conduct surveys of our travellers to really understand what's important to them as they book and enjoy their trips. So this enables us to, um, and our partners like you, to create the best travel experiences. And according to our research, flexibility continues to be key for travellers. Um, I would encourage our partners to offer flexibility wherever possible, um, whether that's through calendar settings, check-in, check-out dates, minimum stay requirements as well, like Henrika mentioned. Um, but what travellers really seem to value the most is having the ability to get a full refund in the event that their plans need to change. So offering a free cancellation period has improved listing visibility and booking volumes for many of the property managers that I work with day to day. Um, what we tend to see is more than three quarters of travellers um, would be more likely to book accommodation where flexible cancellation is offered. And on Verbo, you have five policies to choose from. These range from our strict and firm cancellation policies, which offer a full refund up to 60 days prior to the arrival date, right down to our relaxed and moderate policies, which offer free cancellation up to 14 or 30 days prior to arrival. We do also support a no refund option, but we tend to see much higher conversions on our flexible options. So how do we help you merchandise your cancellation policies on Verbo? Well, first we've developed filters that travelers can use in their, sil in their search to limit the options only to the properties that meet their needs. We'll talk a little bit more about search filters later in line with listing content, but one of the top used filters today is, as you might expect, is cancellation policy. So as you can see on, on the left-hand side of the screen here, travelers can choose only to see properties that support a full refund up to 14 days, 30 days, or 60 days prior to arrival. So essentially any listings on a no refund cancellation policy would not be visible to any travelers that are using that filter. We also badge listings to help draw travelers' attention to the properties with the cancellation policies that they're looking for. So in a dated search, all properties that offer a free cancellation period given the traveler dates um, that, that they've selected will receive a badge. And then in a dateless search, all properties that give a full refund up to 90 days out will receive a badge. Okay. Will I just talk quickly about Bookster? Go for it. Um, so in Bookster, you have the option to set what your cancellation policies are going to be for your Verbo account. Now, when you are onboarding onto a channel or you are onboarding, first of all, you know, at the beginning of your contract with Bookster, you will have an onboarding team and they will show you where these settings are. And that's the same for all of the th aspects I'm gonna show you today. So if you have any questions, get in touch with our team and we'll help you out. But just if you're watching this and you want to just go and double check your settings in Bookster, go over to the settings on the top right hand corner in your account and then scroll down, you'll see a section there called Channel Manager, Verbal Cancellations. And they're the five options that uh, we were talking about earlier that you can choose. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks, Kelly. So moving on to listing content then, um, this really is your opportunity to showcase what makes your property special. And in this section, I'll be covering some tips and tricks around um, amenities, photos, listing headlines, and also descriptions. So let's start with amenities. 70% um, of the travelers that we surveyed are willing to pay more for properties with their favorite amenities. And it kind of makes sense. So if, if you put yourself in the traveler's shoes, think about what features and amenities are important to you when you travel. Perhaps you're taking a pleasure trip or, or a flexcation like Henrika, like Henrika mentioned earlier. Um, in that case, reliable, strong Wi-Fi is likely very important to you or maybe if you're traveling with pets, then access to outdoor space could be a must have. 
um, these features will really make a huge difference to your trip. So ensure that your guests can find the right information that they need to choose the right property. And coming back to those filters that I mentioned earlier, um, what we tend to see is, is a lot of travelers will filter down their searches to really cut through the noise and find the properties that are most suitable to their needs. So by ensuring that all of the relevant amenities are that are appropriate to your property, whether they're big or small, ensuring that they're all selected, you can really help to maximize visibility in those filtered searches. Mm -hmm. And also, as, as you heard before, um, Verbo's primary audience is families. So having the right amenities will help to attract these families who are searching and booking on Verbo. And this is a list of some of the top amenity filters that are used by families on Verbo. So pool, hot tub, internet, Wi-Fi are right up in that, <laughs> excuse me, that top three. Um, and of the travelers that we surveyed, 77% of them said that key technology amenities are a must have for their trips. So as many people um, around the world continue to work virtually, people are taking advantage of being able to work from anywhere, extending their trips, mix that business and pleasure. And this means that reliable, strong Wi-Fi is actually even more critical than ever before. So not only do people want to remain connected and have the ability to work while traveling, in some instances, they may also be relying on a property's facilities to entertain family members while they travel as well. Mm -hmm. OK, so if you're looking to add your amenities within Bookster and we then share it onto Verbo, you'll need to log in, log into your properties and go into your listing details. Now, there's actually a very long section here because we've broken them up into um, what we hope are logical sections so you've got your facilities you've got your technology you've got your outdoor activities work your way through this list tick the boxes that are relevant and we will be sending them up through the api connection and they will be visible on verbo but if you have any questions you're not quite sure what's going to show or um whether you know you need to put in free wi-fi or internet just get in touch with us and we'll talk you through it. Great. Um, so let's take a step back for a moment and think about the very top of the traveler funnel. Um, a picture really is worth a thousand words and your hero image is your first shot in grabbing the attention of a prospective traveler. So make sure that you wow them with bright, colorful, clear images that highlight your property's best features. If you look at these two hero images on the screen, which one would you be more likely to click on? I think I, it's pretty clear for, for me that I know exactly which one that I'd be picking. <laughs> um, I think safe to say it's the bottom one, right? <laughs> Um, you know, great photos, they not only paint the picture of what the traveler's vacation will be like, they also help to increase traveler trust and manage expectations, along with creating an emotional connection with travelers, which will then lead to more bookings as well. I've got a couple of questions about the images. So sure. the photos, in particular, that first photo, which is they'll see on the listings, the kind of main listings page. So you're talking here about choosing a, a facility or a feature that you're most proud of. And I know this is a question we get over and over again. Should it be, you know, I mean, could it be the outside of the building or, um, you know, the view from the balcony? Or would it be more specific about an amenity like a pool or a hot tub that you think would be would be best there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the property managers will will know best what will showcase their property um you know in line with the feedback that they already receive from travelers and, and what kind of is their unique selling points but i would right. definitely recommend if you have something like a pool or a hot tub that we already know is very popular with travelers it's no harm including that as your hero image um, if you've got a great uh, view from the balcony 
that can be helpful to include within the photos, but possibly not as the first image, um, as a picture perhaps of the space, um, maybe a, a living space or um, um, something like that, that actually showcases the property specifically is probably a little bit more appropriate. Okay, and something I saw the other day, so uh, there's a property manager who's clearly got a few different features that they're particularly fond of in their property and they made almost like a collage. So mm. the, the four photos together, is that something you'd recommend or would you just recommend having one strong photo? I would recommend one strong photo um, purely just from the perspective of making sure that it's clear and it really jumps out um, having mm -hmm. multiple pictures in a collage might be a little bit confusion a little bit confusing um, and perhaps might not have as much of an impact to the travelers that are searching okay perfect so that's my questions I'll move on great so um Photos really are the number one reason the travelers click on a property. So again, super important to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and capturing those travelers' attention early within that search. Um, and 83% of the travelers that we surveyed said photos are important in deciding which property to book as well. So not only will they help with page views and, and pulling people through from the search page, but it will also help to drive bookings as well. Um, you can add up to 50 images on your Verbo listing. And we recommend having at least 30 photos. Um, properties with 30 or more photos tend to receive on average 40% more views and 30% more bookings. So if you're thinking about 30 photographs, but you've only maybe got a studio or quite a small apartment, it might be quite difficult mm. for some property manager to take 30 quite distinct different photos there. What, what would you recommend filling those 30 with? Sure, absolutely. And it, this comes up time to time. Um, it, it can be difficult to, to have that many unique photos just of your property. Um, what I would say is, first of all, make sure that you do have images of all of the spaces and you're you know, showcasing all parts of the property effectively. But if you need to kind of bump up that number of photographs, what you could do is perhaps include photos of local attractions and, and things to do while visiting the area. Um, not only will this increase the number of photos that you have, but it can also help to paint a picture for guests of what they can look forward to while they're on their holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Great, so just quickly on, on this slide, um, this is just to show you that our data suggests that properties with more than 30 photos, not only do they receive more bookings and a higher conversion, but the properties with 30 or more photos actually tend to generate um, higher revenue as well. So um, we tend to see that the properties with 30 photos generate 63% of the revenue on Verbo. So definitely worth investing in, in making sure that you've got great photos and enough of them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you come in to add your photos within Bookster, again, this will be shown to you within the training, but you log into your properties and you scroll down to the section called photos and videos. And you can see there, I've only got five photos in my demo account, so that wouldn't do particularly well within Verbo. But you can add your photos in here. You can change the order so you can decide which is going to be your hero image, which will be the first one. Now you can update, or you can add up to 100 photos within Bookster. But obviously in Verbo, they take 50. So you need to make sure that the 50 first photos are the ones that you want to be visible within your Verbo account. But again, you can keep moving those around if you decide you, know, you want to have a slightly different focus and we'll send that up through the API as well. And again, if you need a hand with it, just let us know. So your uh, listing headline then, or strap line as it's called in Bookster, is a brief description that uniquely describes the property and compels the traveler to click through from the search page. It's helpful to highlight the property's key features and amenities, such as pools, hot tubs, Wi-Fi, which we already know are, are really important to guests. Um, no harm as well to include things like ideal target groups, such as families, couples, 
um, showcasing that your property is pet friendly, for, for example, um, along with proximity to local attractions. So perhaps your property is overlooking the beach or a very short walk into the city centre. Um, think also about notable de details that you'd like to ensure that travellers see and highlight the features that, that guests love the most. One thing that I'd recommend would be checking your reviews to see which themes are recurring, because uh, those are clearly something that stands out to guests who have stayed with you before. So calling attention to those will also help to drive more bookings. Mm -hmm. That's amazing advice. OK, I'll move on to property descriptions. Great. Um, so the property descriptions then, they give travellers a little bit more information. Um, this is where you can showcase the important information about your vacation rental um, while marketing its best features and amenities. We'd recommend to keep descriptions short and to the point, around 700 to 1,000 characters is, is our recommendation. Um, and, and it's also recommended to use paragraphs to emphasize those key features and amenities. So grab the traveler's attention in the first sentence, and then also make sure that you're using your descriptions to try and sell your property, conveying its unique character and deliver on what was promised in those headlines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're looking in Bookster to add that information in, you will log into your properties and into listing details. And when you scroll down, it's quite high up actually, in the accommodation section, you can see your description. So your description is making up your, your property description within Verbo. And you have a strap line. And the strap line is what we use as your headline within Verbo as well. So those are the two um, uh, elements for you to update. Yeah, okay, I'll leave it there. Let me move on to the next reviews. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so this is moving on now to my favorite topic, reviews. Um, reviews help your rankings and search results. They help to build trust with prospective travelers, and they also really help to drive bookings. So I'm fairly confident in saying that the majority of you here watching will look up reviews prior to booking a restaurant or accommodation for your own trips. I know certainly it's something that, that I always look at. Um, and according to our data, 92% of travelers want to see reviews before making a booking. As professional property managers, you're all skilled in providing great experiences to your guests. And through collecting excellent feedback, you can improve your listing visibility and also win more bookings. So listings with a higher number of reviews and a good average review score will actually appear higher within the search page. And a listing with even just one review is 13 times more likely to receive a booking than a listing that has no reviews. Wow, that's a big difference. <laughs> Um, not only that, Kelly, but also properties with 20 or more reviews have an 85% higher conversion rate and generate 69% of the revenue on Verbo. So it's definitely well worth it, um, spending your time gathering reviews and collecting that great feedback. Mm -hmm. So a quick one then on, on managing reviews. So within your Verbo Dash, you'll find the reviews tool, which makes it easy to generate and manage reviews. Um, here you can request reviews, you can rate holiday makers and respond to guest reviews as well. Verbo will automatically request reviews from travelers on the day of checkout and will follow up 11 days later. But it is recommended not to just rely on those two automatic touch points. We recommend to um, access into the review section of your dashboard one week post stay and request a review and then also rate holiday makers two weeks post stay. By doing this, you can double your review reminders to guests and you'll also be 20% more likely to receive a property review. So as you can see, reviews are super impactful. Um, and if I could give you three key takeaways on the subject of reviews, it would be one, request reviews and rate travelers post checkout. I'd recommend scheduling time to do this each week. Um, two, mention reviews at the time of check-in. 
This can help to keep reviews front of mind for your guest. And three, respond to all reviews, good or bad. Your responses will be published on your live listing. So this will help to show prospective travelers that you're an attentive property manager. Mm -hmm. So some of you may be familiar already with our Premier Host program. It is essentially um, an exclusive program that recognizes property owners and managers who consistently deliver great traveler experiences. As an account manager, this is one of the first things that I work on with my partners. And how do you get to be a Premier Host? So the eligibility criteria is here on screen. So five bookings or 60 book nights, 90% or higher booking acceptance rate, 5% or lower host initiated cancellation rate. And this is an important one. So traveler initiated cancellations, they, they have no impact here. What we want to try and avoid is disappointing travelers through host cancellations. So if ever a traveler needs to cancel their booking, they should initiate that within their Verbo account. You'll receive a request and then within your Bookster software, you can select guest requested from that drop down menu. That will make sure that we kind of, you know, book at those, those cancellations correctly. Um, the other two areas then are in line with reviews. So just another reason why reviews are so important. Um, we look to see an account with a 4.3 or higher average review rating and three or more Verbo reviews, which is across the full account. As soon as you meet the eligibility criteria, you'll automatically be added into the program and then quarterly will review your premier host status to ensure that you still qualify for that program. And you can check your um, progress at any time within your Verbo dashboard under the performance tab and then work with your account manager to ensure that you get that coveted premier host status. So there are a number of benefits to being a premier host with Verbo. Um, each of your properties will have a premier host badge that is visible on your Verbo listing. And um, this will help to build credibility with, with prospective guests. Your listings will appear within premier host filters, and you'll also have access to our boost program, which helps you to improve a property's listing position within, um, within our search results page. This is one of my favorite new tools. And the boost, the, pro, the boost program essentially, it is exclusive to premier hosts and it's completely free to use. So if you think of it like a loyalty card, um, properties will accrue power up points when guests complete a stay. And then you can redeem these power up points for higher visibility in the search results page, which in turn increases your chances of winning bookings. Um, Premier hosts also benefit then from priority 24 seven customer support. So I know we've covered a lot today, <laughs> um, but if I could summarize it all into three key takeaways, it would be one, offer flexibility in line with, especially with in line with your cancellation policies. Two, optimize your listing content keeping amenities, descriptions, photos, et cetera, all up to date. And three, prioritize earning reviews and becoming a premier host. We are all invested in your success and our dedicated teams are here to help you out. So please do not hesitate to reach out to any of us today, um, your Verbo account manager or customer support teams are here to help as well. So just, Double checking then, what would be the best way to get in touch with, with the teams at Verbo? Would it be yourself they would speak to or would you prefer going to an account manager? I, I'm happy for anyone to reach out to me directly if that's convenient. Um, if you have a Verbo account manager already, best to contact them. Um, but our customer support teams are also available via the help section of the dashboard. So open the top right hand corner, you should see a little help drop down and you'll be able to contact them that way. Um, if you're not already working with Verbo, we have a acquisition team here at Verbo as well, who will be happy to, um, to, to help you get onboarded and answer any questions you have. Excellent. Perfect. So I guess we could just double check to see if there are any other questions coming through. I've seen some questions come through on the chat and I know Sandra's 
done a great job there of going through and answering them. If there's anything else you'd like to ask, now's your moment. Otherwise, there will be other opportunities. After this, I'll get the video and I'll send out the replay to you in the next you know, day or so. And in that, what I'll do is I'll include the, the video from the last event. So if you're wanting to watch that, you can do. I'll have the video from this event. And Henrika, you were talking about having some guides. Do you want to just give me some more details on those as well? Yeah, sure. So we are working on a couple of optimization guides. Of course, you know, it's preferable if you actually speak to the either your account manager, but if it's inconvenient at any stage that you have some something written um, at hand, it's always useful. I know how what that's like. So we are just um, refining a couple of details on those and then it'll be ready to be sent out to you. Um, so yeah, if in case you didn't get any of the uh, detailed statistics there on the slides, <laughs> if you haven't memorized those, there will be uh, there will be lots of information in those. Also, we do have lots and lots of information on our discovery hub, or it's, is it called Info Network now, Jessica? I actually forgot. <laughs> um, but discovery on the discovery hub is right. Yeah, discovery hub. Okay, um, where there's lots and lots of detailed information about all sorts of things. So you feel free to have a browse there. Um, if you do have a specific question, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, or you can just ask uh, Kelly for, for any contacts. We can freely share those out as well. Okay. Perfect. I've just seen a message come in from Ian there. Ian, you sent this message in advance. So I have replied back to you uh, by email this morning. So that's the answer and the right person to speak to will be very shortly with you. Okay. Okay. In that case, I think we can leave the event there. Thank you so much to everybody that's come, to all our attendees. Thank you for asking the questions and thank you to my special guests. It's been a really nice event, really useful. I've certainly learned loads, so thank you for your time. Thanks thank for you. hosting, Kelly. Thanks for joining, everybody. Bye. Perfect. Bye now.